Yes, Roberto Andreoli, he's here from Microsoft uh, and he's doing the IoT and AI space in Europe. He's from Milan, Italy. And I'm looking forward very much to this talk because um, I love that AI allows us to, uh, to uh, break the barrier between human and computers. Like my parents wouldn't touch any computer. They, would, they hate keyboards. They don't know what to do with the mouse. But when there is something like the first thing was the Wii, when I'm saying, like, you play tennis by doing this. And they're like, OK, then I'm playing tennis with you. I'm not going to use a controller or something like that. So with cognitive systems and cognitive services, we can allow people to be human and make mistakes and talk to computers and write things in a strange fashion or detect their facial expressions, detect their emotions. And it's the way how we get computers to become, become much more human. So without giving too much away and get, wanting to give the talk, because I always love these cognitive services things, um, Thank Please you. tell us about cognitive services and how to make computers more human. Good. You created very high expectation from this <laughs> session. So, good morning, buongiorno. How, how, how do you feel? Good? Yes? Good, good. So, it's, I, I know I'm between uh, you and the lunch, so probably I needed to make uh, this session interactive. Uh, I will try now to show more demo example instead of only slides. I will try to make a little bit interactive, OK? Uh, I'm working in Microsoft. Yes, I work for Microsoft, and uh, I am responsible for data AI and IoT in uh, Europe. And with my colleagues, I, I think that uh, we, I liked a lot this event. I saw different interaction, different good topics. So uh, it has been a pleasure to, to, to decide to be here. So thank you very much also for, for coming to this session. Before starting this session, I, I have an ask for you. Have you ever installed uh, on your mobile uh, this, uh, this application? Yes or no? What, just one? OK. Now you need uh, to install it. OK, so take your phone and try to install. OK, so we can uh, now consume uh, some uh, Azure services. Or, OK, so let's try to install. Let's do it. Come on. So with Microsoft Translator, we will demo something. So if you would like to experience how cognitive services are working in real time, in real life, and not like a demo, OK, please do it. OK? Before starting, I would like to roll a video that shows some AI cognitive services example. And then we can try now to understand how you can leverage the cognitive services inside infusing AI in your application. As our world becomes increasingly digitized, so does our ability to connect with it. Imagine if you could search your surroundings the same way you search the web. Using existing cameras and advances in AI, we can now find things and people in the real world in real time and take action to improve safety and well-being. When a dangerous spill occurs in a chemical plant, cameras recognize the incident. Information about the spill is instantly shared with the people who need it the most, enabling them to protect other employees from coming in contact with the hazard and clean it up. This technology can also help keep people safer in hospitals. Patients recovering from heart surgery are limited to how much they should exert themselves. When someone exceeds the prescribed level of activity, a nurse is alerted. What's more, the location of the closest wheelchair is identified so that the nurse can quickly get the patient seated and safe. This technology is also useful in an environment like a construction site, where people who need specialized tools are spread out, sometimes across multiple floors. Using cameras already in place, this technology can identify a specific tool, as well as the closest authorized person who can deliver it, saving everyone time and keeping the workflow moving. The digital and physical worlds are coming together to help make everyone more safe, secure, and productive. And we're bringing the edge of Microsoft's cloud to any device. I think uh, this video is very nice. I don't know if you like it, but uh, the, I think that the main message is uh, all the things that you have seen in this video, is it something no, that you can implement uh, today? 
is not the future. No, it's not like a film, a movie, where you can see something, oh, this is the future. No. You can use the cognitive services, and you can obviously, you, sometimes you need to extend. It's not just to clarify, it's not just a next, next, next exercise. You need to develop something, you need to put the effort, you need to think how to use cognitive services inside your application, but at the end, it will be just a simple REST API call, you will see, or it will be some code, but at the end of the day, it's, it will be very simple now to integrate these kind of functionalities. Obviously, you need information, you need to train the models, but at the end, this is something that you can do immediately. What is AI? I think that you can answer directly to this question after these two days, otherwise why you are here. So you should have already uh, understood no, what is AI, what does it mean. So this, this AI is for sure a broader topic. I think that uh, this definition is uh, something that uh, I like the most. AI is the way we can help no, people, organization, to do something more, to optimize their job, to, optimize, to increase their productivity, to remove barriers. Think about the language exercise that we will do later, okay? How we can collaborate, how we can communicate better inside the organization, uh, deleting the boundaries, no? The geographical boundaries, the different things that we have in, uh, during the life. So I, I think that AI is, uh, can, is it something, is a set eh, of technology that can help us uh, to perceive, that can help, no? Through the computer to perceive, learn, and reasoning. And uh, cognitive services is the core, okay, of this. Uh, is the, let me say, implementation of this AI vision, okay? And uh, with cognitive services, what you can do? With cognitive services, you can do three main things. You can analyze uh, uh, the environment. You can analyze uh, a picture, an image. You can extract information from pictures, images. You can uh, understand the language. Okay, you can translate uh, the speech to text, uh, text to speech. Uh, you can translate uh, in different languages uh, what you are, okay, what the system is listening. Okay, and then uh, as, as I said, now the language component is an important uh, thing. The language understanding is the, in the core, okay, of each AI service of every AI services. When we talk about Azure, okay, so Microsoft Azure, as you know, is uh, our cloud platform. When we talk about Azure AI. We can divide our AI capabilities in three main areas. Okay, uh, you saw the concept of uh, apps and agents. So how you can develop a bot with the bot framework. Yesterday we had a session on this. In the bot, you can use and you can leverage the cognitive services component for sure. And here you can see that I listed no cognitive services and the bot service. Then we have the knowledge mining. This is, I think, the most interesting part, because at the end of the day, we have tons of information, tons of data inside the company, but sometimes we don't know why we have this data, and we are not able to use, okay, to leverage this data in a proper manner. So the point is how we can, I, I, I can extract for these tons of information the knowledge, the meaning of the information, because at the end, otherwise it will be just data. It will be just something that I cannot leverage. And then at the end, the machine learning component, okay, how I can train models, how we can learn, okay, how the PC, okay, the compute capabilities that I have can learn, okay, uh, through, the, uh, through machine learning, you know, these, uh, these kind of functionalities. When we talk about cognitive services, cognitive services are uh, these two categories. So we have uh, cognitive services uh, that can be used in apps. So how you can infuse cognitive services in your apps or cognitive services inside bots. And then also, we released the Azure Cognitive Search, which is a set of cognitive services, set of functionalities that you can use to extract the knowledge from the information. During this presentation, I will try to show eh, some of these examples. Who installed the Microsoft Translator? Bravi, molto bene, good. So Microsoft Translator is very, very simple. Eh? It's a tool that we all know, OK? And uh, when you go to microsofttranslator.com, you can install also a PowerPoint add-in, OK? I don't know if you've ever seen this add-in, but this is very simple uh, in terms of using it. So what I can do is I can start to present with the subtitling. Okay, which is good. I know I'm Italian. Usually, Italians are not speak 
so well English, so I can speak in Italian, you can read in English, or you can listen with your local language. It's good, no? So let's try to make this example. Italian, okay, subtitle in English, so we'll see the uh, English translator in real time. If you choose, when I say do it, if you choose your local language, you see in your phone your local language in real time. So start the subtitling. Good. So you can take a picture or you can include the code XYELT inside your application so you can join uh, the conversation. Buongiorno a tutti. You should uh, see somewhere. Uh, Ah, because it's a, hmm, this is good, eh? because it's a, one second. Buongiorno a tutti. Hmm. Pronto, pronto, pronto. Ok, ciao a tutti, sono molto contento di essere qua. Questa conferenza è molto bella. E oggi vi parlerò dei servizi cognitivi e di come possiamo realizzare i servizi cognitivi Microsoft e di come voi potete utilizzare i servizi cognitivi all'interno delle vostre applicazioni. Are you able to see the translation? Ok. Funziona, no? È un bel esempio di applicazione e di servizio cognitivo che in tempo reale voi potete utilizzare per rimuovere le barriere cognitive all'interno delle vostre organizzazioni. Questo è spettacolare, credo. Ok, good. So this is, a, this is the first example. And you said, ok, this is, a, this is something that Microsoft created. It's very, very complex to use. No, it's not complex. You can use it in a very, very easy way because the power of cognitive services is that this is a SaaS service that you can invoke in an easy way through a REST API call. Let's see how we can do this. So, first demo translator done and the word more or less. Okay? Cognitive services for me is the way we can democratize AI, OK? Because uh, before cognitive services, uh, before the implementation of the Azure cognitive services, if you would like to implement something like what you have seen a few seconds ago, it required uh, skills, uh, competencies, a lot of time. Now we require the skills and competence, for sure. But in terms of time, this is something that uh, can be very, very short. Okay, in terms of, okay, we started to develop something and then we deploy in a very, very short time frame. Thanks to the cognitive services, because the cognitive services provided by us, okay, but also by other, eh, let me say, also the other vendor in the market are doing something similar, okay? I can speak for our services. In general, uh, the first pillar and the first value, if you use these services, uh, it's easy. Okay, to use. It's easy to implement. You know how to develop in C Sharp, okay? Let's, and you can use different languages, obviously, but let's try to, to develop something in C Sharp, and then you just need a few lines of code, okay, to invoke the service, to consume the services, and get back the information from the services. Then it's flexible, okay, you can use different languages. So it's not just uh, the Microsoft story, the Microsoft stack, but you can use every language that you want. And then at the end of the day, this is a community effort, and this is something that we tested. Because as you know, Microsoft has a big research, okay, uh, research team, and thanks to this big research team, we train the model, and we put our experiences and our knowledge inside the cognitive services for you. Okay? So for you, to simplify, it's uh, just a black box uh, that you invoke because you know that the black box is doing something for you. The cognitive services uh, are divided in this category, vision, speech, language, search. Okay? Let's try to see the cognitive services in action instead of uh, a simple slide. How to test and how to use, okay, how to fill uh, these cognitive services, very simple. What you can do is, uh, Obviously, you can uh, have uh, an, Azure, uh, an Azure subscription, you can install, initiate them, and then you can use. But if you would like to test uh, in your organization uh, to see the result, uh, it's very simple. You just need uh, to go to the 
Microsoft Cognitive Services Microsoft website, the public one, okay? And you will see this page, okay? This page is divided uh, by category. So you see vision, services, speech, language, knowledge, search, okay? Let's try to do something uh, with computer vision. Computer vision is the way I can analyze the image, okay? The ambient, uh, okay? The landscape. So let's try to do this demo. I took some picture before, okay? This is the picture of this room before the speech, okay? So it's a really, it's a real, it's not a demo, okay? And here you can see the JSON file, because when you call a cognitive services as an output, you have a JSON file with different tags, okay, and different information that you can use now to inside your application. And here you can see that we can, we can see that we are in a building, large person, all people, there are some people, and then you have the different index of confidence, okay, for each attribute, okay? This is the first, the first example. So we are able to analyze, okay, the environment. Another example could be this one. We are able to, 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 to analyze faces and to recognize the emotion, as he said, no? It's a complex work. Sometimes it doesn't work because, because the light, because the environment, especially for the age. If I need to evaluate an age, sometimes it's difficult, but let's try it. I will submit... Uh, Ooh, this is my, my daughter, one of the different child that I have in the world, but this is, this is my daughter. She's female, good, <laughs> done, fortunately. No glasses, emotion, happiness. So this is a real emotion recognition. She is a six years old, not four, okay? But it's okay. Here you can see the JSON. It analyzes the number of faces that we have. The, the size of the phase, and then for each okay, attribute, you can see the confident level, okay? And thanks to this, you can use it in your application. Let's try to do something with my, my face. <laughs> this is this morning, eh? I am. The age is 52. We have an issue here, because I'm not 52, it's probably because I have the pink hair, but it's not 52. I'm much more younger, no? Let's try to do, and I will demonstrate that sometimes with the different condition, also the cognitive services are not so precise, but for sure, I'm male, fortunately. <laughs> no glasses and happiness, yeah, more or less happiness. Let's try. Browse. Let's try to improve my age a little bit. Okay? This is another version of me before, <laughs> before this session, because I'm trying to do like him, more or less. So, neutral, happy, ah, sorry. This is not the right service. One second, eh? I used another one. Let's try again to see if we improved my age, eh? Because error is a big difference, you know? 43. This is better, no? We are, but we can do more, okay? We can do more. I still mail, I still, uh, okay, but we can do more. Okay, this is my age, okay? This is good. So, Thanks. Uh, so a part, a part of joking, no? Just to demonstrate, no, the different impact of the behavior, the, the light, uh, the air. Eh? But you can, no? you can understand uh, how, how it works. Then, obviously, you have also other functionalities, uh, like, for example, the video indexer. And the video indexer is uh, something spectacular. The video indexer uh, is uh, something that you can leverage to stream the video and analyze in real time uh, the video. So the cognitive services for you will extract the tag information from a video that you can reuse. Let's try to do an example. How to do this? Very simple. You can try, and then you can go to why video indexer, microsoft.com, OK? Then you can. Access, you can start a trial. I will access to my 
Microsoft login. And then we have some sample video. Let's try to run uh, this one, for example. This is the video indexer. We uploaded inside uh, the application. Uh, the application analyzed the video. OK. Let's I'm here with Pete Carroll at the uh, Seahawks training facility. I just watched one of the most amazing training performances. I'd OK. This is Satya Nadella. He speaks. Eh? You can see the number of people okay, that the Cognitive Services recognize. You can see the different business topics extracted automatically from the video, the different keyword. And obviously, when you said, OK, let's go to it, refresh the system tag, the video, when they discuss about a specific here, OK, a specific topic, OK? Then the video analyzes the sentiment, extracts the image, and they frame with the relevance during the conversation. But obviously, we can do more. We can, for example, View. Let's see the timeline. Here in the timeline, we are analyzing in real time the speech. Okay, we translate the speech. So this is English. Let's try German. Okay, let's try German. And you can tell me if uh, it's correct or not. It's good. Not bad. No, it's not correct. Ah, ah sorry, 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 sorry. With all of this data. <laughs> I mean, in some sense, you're creating this digital twin only to make the actual physical twin more powerful, better perform. Sorry. The other area that I think we can really use this digital transformation is to Come on. Good, image. more or less. I, mean, I, 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 I cannot judge. I can say yes, but OK. Then uh, in the cognitive services, this is a, a show that during the timeline, we can add the people in the video. We can say, OK, which kind of keyword we are using, which kind of sentiment okay, we see in the video. And this is another service that you can leverage just with a simple invoke. Okay? How to use cognitive services inside our application in a simple way? If you go, for example, to GitHub, Inside the GitHub, we have uh, this repository, Azure sample. Then you can find the uh, uh, Cognitive Services API sample. Okay. Then uh, you can say, OK, Vision, okay, the services that we just use, Vision and uh, face recognition. And this is the code that you need to implement in order to execute what we have just seen. So what you need to do is uh, just to put the subscription key of your Azure subscription. Then uh, the URI, okay, the URL of the services that you need to invoke. Okay, face, okay, this is the detection of the face. And then uh, you just need to start, log on, and then, then, then here we have, uh, we have uh, the execution of the REST API. So you log on, you pass the image, you execute the REST API, and then you get back the JSON file that you have seen through the website. But the, the output is exactly what you have seen in the website. OK? Good. Let me see what we need to say in the demo again. Uh, no, thanks. Video indexer done. This is the URL that you can use to test the video indexer. Then another good thing is the AI Lab. How many of you are aware about AI Lab? Some of you, which is not good, but after this session, you will know uh, how to run a marathon. The, ah, this, is, uh, this is another thing on a QA maker. If I have time, I will show you. No, uh, AI Labs, Microsoft. OK. So here, uh, this is a website uh, mm, that you can use uh, to test some solution that we released. Okay? And for each solution, you have the architecture, how we implemented, and also the source code that we used. Okay? So it's a good you know, way to teach, to learn okay? something. So the, here, we have the, some projects. Okay? We have cricket, because probably Satya is playing cricket, so we are, we are doing something you know, uh, with cricket. But as you can see, we have the intelligent robotic demo. We have uh, the sketch to code, which is nice. So you sketch 
a paint, and then uh, a paint of a text box, a combo box, eh? then the Cognitive Service translate for you in an HTML and generate the code to realize that specific window. This is an example. How we can build a bot, JFK file. This is another demo that I would like to show. Okay? And JFK file is something that probably you have already seen you know, in some presentation through video. Today I will demo. This, uh, this solution, and it's related to the knowledge mining. So we saw some cognitive services. I know we need uh, to spend probably tons of hours uh, to understand the different uh, cognitive services we do, that we have. But in terms of knowledge mining, I think that uh, uh, the simple, simple way is that we have tons of document structure, unstructured, picture, text, uh, writing, uh, okay, writing document. And this is something that for sure uh, we, need, uh, we need to be able to analyze. Okay, we should be able to analyze in order to extract the knowledge. Azure search, this is something, the cognitive search is something that we can use to extract this information and then to extrapolate the mining. And this is the process, no? Okay, of the Azure search. This is the process, so we have the documents, we extract uh, key phrases, uh, organization, we map the different entities inside the document, then we apply the specific cognitive skills, uh, which are the cognitive services that we just saw, okay? So we applied inside the solution the different cognitive services, and then we have the results, like, for example, the sentiment analysis, the language detection, and then we have a map of all the different entities uh, in a structured way that you can uh, analyze, you can search, you can look, you can go in detail. And this is the JFK file example. JFK file is, you know, John Frigerard Kennedy, we extracted and we elaborated all the different documents around that specific border. And you can experience eh, by yourself uh, this demo. This is the, the, uh, this is the URL, uh, JFK the demo Azure websites.net, uh, but you will find eh, in the presentation. So we search for Oswald. This is a real-time search inside, uh, inside the application. As you can see, you can find all the different documents with all the different tags that have been created automatically by the system. You can navigate inside the document. So as you can see, I scroll here, and I can see the related document. Okay. Then you can analyze also here, for example, the images. Okay, that have been recognized and tagged by Oswald with other tags. So, for example, here we apply the cognitive services to see, okay, to understand uh, this picture. And then we can extract also, for example, the relationship, okay, between the different entities that we have extracted. Okay, this is the knowledge. So Oswald is here, and then we can understand the different relationship that we, he has with the different objects inside these towns of documents. Okay, this is a good way eh, to experience the knowledge mining, uh, also to uh, try to understand how it works. Okay. In the AI labs, you will find this is the, the URL if you would like to take a picture for you. So this night you can play. Okay, and then you will find eh, you will find uh, the detailed architecture and how we can build uh, the service. Last but not least, the question is, ah, good, Roberto, good. But the point is, uh, we, uh, we are late, eh? okay? Yeah, but we have one minute and then uh, other two minutes for question if you have. And then you can go to lunch. Uh, the, the other question is, ah, Roberto, good. But uh, this is uh, something that uh, can be used just uh, with a connected uh, no, scenario. Okay, through the cloud, okay, but uh, I work in, uh, in a, on an oil station inside the ocean, and sometimes I have no connection. How I can do, how I can analyze, okay, how I can leverage the cognitive services also in a disconnected environment. Think about the manufacturing. Well, sometimes we have no this kind of, uh, with the right bandwidth, the right speed in terms of connection. This is something that we just announced a few days ago. So all these services can be used inside containers. Okay? So you can package these services inside containers, and you can deploy inside the containers on the edge these services in a disconnected world. Okay? So you can deploy on your device some of all these services, and you can use them okay? disconnected. That's all. I don't know if uh, we have a question. 
if we have, uh, we can try to answer. So, uh, there were a few. Um, I can actually help with some of them. Why do you use Google Chrome over Edge? Because I haven't met you yet. Uh, are these cognitive services available in Office 365? Yes. Good. Uh, <laughs> no, yes, yes, because uh, inside uh, Office 365, for example, you have uh, some, uh, for example, in uh, Word, uh, Excel, uh, you have the implementation of cognitive services inside. Not all, uh, because it depends on the application, but yes, for our AI, infused AI, we use uh, this kind of technology. Um, video tracking of employees is against the law in most EU countries. How can you ensure only objects are tracked, but not people? Okay, okay. So for, uh, I, I think that uh, the, the answer should be how we can be compliant also with GDPR uh, for the European law. All these uh, solutions are certified and fully compliant with GDPR, so this is my first answer. Okay, and then how we can ensure that the system will not track okay, people, it depends obviously on the implementation. No? Uh, so if you implement something that uses the technology not in the proper way, obviously the technology will not use in the proper way way. What we, we can ensure from a, a platform company perspective is that we treat the data information compliant to the European law. Can the video indexer be used to automatically detect product placement in video? See, yes. Yes, we can, we can absolutely uh, try because this is an implementation for marketing purpose. Okay, we can use uh, to identify products. Uh, we can, uh, for example, we, we used also uh, video indexer in uh, a retail environment, in a retail space, uh, when we track and when we can understand the different, how the people are moving inside the store to optimize the spaces inside the store. So this is something that we can use, yes. Cool. Um, you showed us advanced video analysis, which looked very much like stream implementation. When will this be rolled out in Europe? It's already available in Europe. OK, that's easy. Can I install Microsoft Translator if I don't have a Windows phone? Yes, I've got an Android phone. Um, <laughs> can we save translated conversations in the end? Is there going to be a log of the translated conversation? Sorry? Can we save the translated conversations yes. in the end? Is yes. there going to be a log? And what's the format? Yes. Uh, I just wanted to have you not say I, yes, I yes, yes. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Good. Um, but, uh, but can be a text, a CSV, and uh, I, I don't know which kind of format we can VTT, use. VTT, I think, as well. No, yeah. I don't know. I, I can check, and then I'll let you know. Just uh, who wrote this question, send me an email, and then I will try to answer. Good. Um, is there any AI service from Microsoft that helps developers in writing code? AI services from Microsoft who helps developers? Well, there's insights in Visual Studio Code, and there's insights in Visual Studio. There's, um, yeah, look at Visual Studio Code. Yeah, also yeah. contribute. It's open source. So I, I work on Visual Studio Code, so I can answer these questions if necessary. OK, good. Good. Um, we used to have that video indexer uh, tool. That seems to have gone now. Is that only on Azure now? That you were able to upload videos and yeah. you got the, uh, that was a demo? The, this is a, uh, yes, uh, the, this is a, the DV video indexer, the implementation, this is something that uh, we can show, not the technology, but the video indexer is exactly a cognitive services. Uh, no? If you go to the web page that I show you, on the right side you will see the, the video part uh, and then you will see the video indexer service. Hmm. Um, I heard rumors that the automated transcription will be automatically in PowerPoint soon and not as an add-on anymore. Do you know any times for that? I don't know. Okay. I guess with that we go to lunch. So and, uh, and if you try Outlook, okay, the latest version with the latest update, if I, uh, you, you will discover a function that can translate automatically the email. OK, which is good. It's another implementation. So uh, you, you can see if I write in Italian, you can translate in your local language without asking me, please, write in uh, Dutch. Same way Bing, uh, uh, Twitter uses Bing for translating yep. their stuff as well. Yep. OK, now we're off to lunch. Thank you very much Thank again. Thank you. Bye-bye.